Welcome to this panel, Feminist Mayors Equal Cities for All. My name is Ana Maria Vargas, and I'm the Research Director of the Swedish International Center for Local Democracy, and have the honor to moderate this panel. The panel is conducted in Spanish and English, and there is simultaneous translation that you can access on Zoom on the bottom of this page. The panel will last one hour, and after the panel, we will have a practical workshop to learn about tools and policies that local governments can use to start working for gender equality today. And I will say this in Spanish now to provide the instructions. Uh, bienvenidas y bienvenidos a esta charla de alcaldesas feministas, igual ciudades para todos y todas. Mi nombre es Ana María Vargas y soy la directora de investigación del Centro Sueco para la Democracia Local y tengo el honor de moderar este panel. El evento será en inglés y en español y hay traducción simultánea a la cual pueden acceder a través del botón que hay en Zoom en la parte de abajo de la pantalla. La charla dura una hora y después tendremos una hora de taller para aprender políticas o métodos para empezar a trabajar por la igualdad de género hoy mismo en tu municipalidad o donde estés. So I'm coming back to English and this would we will switch back and forth a little bit, but I hope everybody is now acquainted with the interpretation method and this working. Um, and I would like to give the floor to Emilia, the Secretary General of ICLD, to make the welcome remarks. And I would also like to remind everybody to mute your microphones uh, so that we can listen to our speakers. Johan, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, uh, Anna Maria. As said, my name is Johan Lilja. I'm the Secretary General of ICLD. Happy International Women's Day to all of you. Uh, and thank you for giving me this opportunity to welcome you to our event, Local Democracy Talk, uh, Feminist Mayors, Cities for All. I hope you are well, wherever you are. But before I continue, I would like to thank all our partners that makes this event to happen, that is SIDA, is the Decentralization Local Governance Network DLOG, the Federation of Canada, Canadian Municipalities, UN Women Colombia, the International Observatory and Participatory Democracy, UCLG SIB Group, the Association of Municipalities of Guatemala, the Federation of Colombian Municipalities, and the Swedish Embassies in Colombia and Guatemala. Thank you. The full and equitable participation of women in public life is essential to build a sustained, strong and vibrant democracy. I've been fighting poverty and inequality my whole adult life. And I have first-hand proof of what happens when women enter the stage and platform of leadership and get influence on money distribution. The transformation is radical and it's real. There are undeniable proof that gender equality and the role of women in development are central and are an accelerator for implementation of all the SDGs, the global goals. I had the privilege to interview a young successful mayor from the Philippines last week, Trina Firmalo. And I have actually written a blog that you can find on our webpage uh, after this day. And it has the title, A Long Way to Become a Mayor. And she shared a story that touched me and that I would like to share an extract from with you. After Trina's grandmother, who was widowed and left with nine children. Yeah, yeah. She sold her property and had to work extremely hard to support the oldest of the children to school. And when they later on found work, they also supported their younger siblings to education. So the strong-headed grandmother who took on the challenge to feed and bring up her nine children which later on led to the father of Trina got a good education and became a medical doctor. So the strength in the grandmother made it indirectly possible for Trina to become a leader in her municipality and a role model for other women as well. So 
she's today mentoring a lot of women politicians. She meets many young girls when she visits schools and girls who say to her that they also want to become a mayor in the future as well. So just being a young woman mayor inspires many others to follow in her footsteps. For me, that is so inspiring and so promising for the future. So let us be clear. Women bring a perspective that is important for the communities and they should be equal representation in city councils as men. For me, the strongest message on an International Women's Day is that when you invest your energy as a grandmother or as a role model, that will create results of tomorrow. And we are today so honored to have this inspiring group of female mayors and female leaders with us today. And I know that you all are waiting to listen to them more than listen to me. But remember, you can become the glimmer of hope for someone else by acting today. So with these words of introduction, I'm happy to announce that ICLD will launch its strong and new international network for local governments of gender equality in Latin America. So I will, for anybody from Sweden and the Swedish municipalities that listen to me, I will encourage you to go into our webpage and also look for uh, uh, the possibility to work with a network of gender uh, in Latin America. So if you have an interest of working with gender, and working in Latin America, we have today opened that opportunity. With those words, I hand over back to you, Anna Maria. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Johan, and thank you to everybody that has helped and collaborated with this event. As Johan said, today is Women's International Day, and we wanted to highlight the important target of the Sustainable Development Goal 5 about ensuring women equal opportunities to leadership at all levels of decision making. And why is this important? According to the United Cities and local governments, only 5% of the mayors in the world are women. So the mayors that we have here with us, they are actually very rare. Uh, we are here to listen to the powerful stories, to see why and how feminist mayors can help us to transform our cities and transform the world to make gender equality a reality for our children. So I will start by introducing each of them. We have with us, Mayor Dawn Arnold, and she's the mayor of Moncton in Canada. Welcome. We have Kenungwe Chota, mayor of Kanchibiya district in Zambia. Welcome. Aidubi Mateus, mayor of Gambita in Colombia. Welcome. Celestina Tepaz, and she's the mayor of Santa Maria de Jesus in Guatemala. And Marianne Henel, she's the councillor of Vestavik, Sweden, and she is replacing Matilda Verdenfalk, who was unfortunately sick today. So, Mayor Arnold, we will start with you. Uh, you were elected as Moncton, Canada's first female mayor in 2016. Uh, during your tenure as city councillor from 2012 to 2016, you earn a reputation as one of Moncton's most accessible and actively engaged councillors. Uh, she was also the recipient of the Women of Influence in Local Government Award for 2021 from Municipal World. And you are known to be a strong leader who helps the community tremendously for bridging gaps during difficult times. Uh, it is a pleasure to have you here, and we want to start by asking you uh, to share with us what inspired you to become a politician, and how has your approach to politics been different? Well, thank you, Anna Maria. It's a real pleasure to be with all of you here today, and um, I, I'm coming to you from the traditional unceded uh, territory of the Mi'kmaq and Maliseet people. And just to orient everybody, I am on the east coast of Canada, right on about 20 minutes from the Atlantic Ocean. So when I reflect back on my life, uh, it, it probably shouldn't come as a surprise that I am a politician, but it did. Uh, I don't come from a political family, and I actually have no idea how my parents voted in any election. 
there was never a political sign in my house. But I was always that kid that uh, organized things, who took on leadership positions, uh, who was constantly trying to affect positive change in my community. I had many um, positions on student governments throughout the years, uh, throughout my education, but still, it ultimately came as a surprise. So about 11 years ago, I was 45 years old, and I was with my two kids and my husband, and we were on a, a, a March break trip, and we were in um, Los Angeles, California. And my kids wanted to go see that big Hollywood sign for some reason. And some reason, I had to go back to the hotel room, and Fox News was on. And I don't watch TV typically, but this was on. And there was something going on in Texas with Republican Senator Rick Perry that made me crazy. And I became irrationally angry. And right then, at that point in time, I said, we need more women's voices around decision making tables. And I need to step up. I need to lean in. And I need to make sure that my voice is heard. So that's my story. And I've been at it for almost 11 years now. Thank you. Thank you. So here is we need to have different voices and you step up to have your voice heard. We're going to move to the other side of the world and move to the African continent. And we have with us Kenun Wechota, and she is the mayor of Kanchibija district in Zambia. Uh, she is the youngest female mayor in Zambia with just 27 years old when she was elected. One of her aims was to inspire young girls to go to school and get good grades. She uses her own experience as a child who became pregnant while attending university to inspire young girls about the fact that getting pregnant at a young age is not the end of the world. Uh, welcome, Ken Unwe. It's a pleasure to have you here. Tell us about what would you say to other girls that also became mothers at an early age and felt there were no more opportunities for them and how this is linked to your political story? Uh, thank you so much, Anna. Um, I think maybe before I answer your question, it will be very important that I also give uh, a brief background of uh, where Kanchibia is located. Kanchibia is located in Muchinga province, right here in Zambia. Kanchibia is the biggest district in terms of land size in the uh, country. It is almost compared to the uh, country uh, Iswati. That's the land size of uh, Kanchibia. Kanchibia is mostly rural, more than it is uh, urban. So uh, now I can answer your question. I think um, having stated very well that I came from a family which was a little bit political because my father had been trying, uh, trying to run uh, for political office for quite some time. So from time to time, he carried me uh, during his uh, political trails. So I got exposed uh, at a very young age. Because of that exposure, I gained the confidence to speak to a crowd early enough, which of course very few people in my district have. Away from that, I think I earlier mentioned uh, previously that of course my father died when I was a very young uh, girl. He died when I was just about uh, 12 to 13 years of age. After that, I knew very well that I wanted to uh, go into politics and finish what he started. So when I got to university at the age of 19, I joined active politics. I ran for publicity and information secretary. And uh, just before I could graduate, of course, I fell pregnant. And I had to be a mother at a very young age. I think almost everything shut down at that point. But there's something that I kept telling myself, I am not, means to just be a mother and just sit down and not do anything out there. I started working and uh, when I started working, I was teaching. And when I taught, I could always find myself being drawn to the girls. And it was that, 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 that girl, it was always, I needed to speak to that girl. Away from that, I come from a family. My father died when I was very young. So I was raised by a single mom a single mom with no education background, a single mom who did very little business to raise us. I have two young sisters. So I became a co-parent at a very young age. I had to help my mom parent my two young sisters at a very young age. So that responsibility came with being the firstborn in a family of three girls, being raised by a woman 
who was very strong on uh, morals. She raised us in that manner. So having uh, that background, it helped me to be a strong woman because I knew that a woman can be a head of the house because I was raised by a woman. So even when I started teaching, I would always encourage the young girls. There's a way that I wanted to mold them, but obviously it's not up to me. The only thing I could do was offer my, 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 my previous experience to them. Hoping obviously that they don't make the same mistake, but for those who had made the same mistake, telling them that look at look at me, I did not give up, I did not stay. But the fact that I was closed up in a classroom, it wasn't enough. I felt like I could, I had wings and I needed to fly. And having a political background, my father being a member of parliament in Kanchibia district, it's a fertile ground. Kanchibia not having so many female representatives, I'm the first female mayor in Kanchibia. I say, you know what, I will go back despite my age. Of course, a number of people did mention that she's young, she has no experience. We can't give her such a big uh, platform, but I went in with little or no skills. I said, I've got this. I think it's a matter of confidence and believing in yourself. And at that moment, I did not even, uh, I remember a lot of people were actually saying you won't manage. Politics is a different ball game, but I went in there and fought all the challenges. And in the end, here I am. So I think in brief, that is my story. Thank you for sharing your story, Kenungwe, uh, and the difficulties that many women experience like you, but also the importance of having role models to share what you are doing so that many other women get inspired. If we think that only 5% of mayors in the world are women, then it's rare actually. And we need to share those 5% examples more and more so that more women feel that this is a job that actually we could take. Uh, we will move now to Latin America, to Colombia. And um, I'm gonna speak in Spanish now. Uh, voy a introducir a Aitubi Mateos y espero que la interpretación funciona. Ahora sí al inglés. It is working. Can you put a thumbs up to check whether it's working? Okay. I do be. Thank you so much for being here with us. And uh, we have I do be from Gambita in Santander. And you uh, receive a recognition uh, by the Ibero American Mujer Mariposa Foundation in Mexico last year for your contribution to the defense of gender equality and different initiatives uh, to support uh, women in your rural territory. Uh, you have advanced different areas for gender equality. Uh, it is a really pleasure to have you here. So please uh, tell us a little bit about the way you became a mayor in your region, what obstacles you face and how you overcome them. And I will unmute you now. Wait, wait, wait. Now you can unmute. No, 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 we can. Ahí ya, ¿cierto? Sí, sí. Bueno, cordial y afectuoso saludo oh, para. Uh, thank you all and greetings to everyone. I would like uh, to first of all congratulate all municipalities and to thank the organization of these spaces and events so that we can discuss uh, gender equality because I am fully convinced that women who are here today need to leave. Uh, the door open for other women to be able to lead leadership roles. And these roles are essential for society to build social cohesion. I am Aydubis Mateos, I'm the mayor of Gambita in the beautiful province of Santander, a beauty of a place here in our country, Colombia. I am a woman, uh, um, I've been my mother was a single mom and she had four children. She was both mother and father. And she taught me that we can uh, move forward in life, but we also need to heal so that we can move in our path forward and so that we can serve our own community. Uh, in our home, my grandfather was a important family figure. And when he would organize uh, community meetings, I used to be the girl who was always running around in those meetings. So through the example that was set, I learned 
uh, significantly. And this is the best way to experience things. And now with the work that we've been undertaking, it's not about complaining, but rather of trying to find the best solution in order to help our community. It wasn't easy because Santander is a chauvinistic province and where uh, it's a male dominated province from the 17 municipalities from our province. It's, it representatives only come from 14 provinces. And the fact that we managed to uh, get to power was democracy. It was the community who saw the values and principles and uh, capacity for me to be the governor of Gambita. And so we have something which is uh, excellent, and that is that we love people and through love and passion, we are able to gather the community. And that's a program that we have from the administration. We can't do things on our own. We have to work with entities, with police forces, with the private sector, with retailers, with everyone who is involved in all of the at community level. So we need mutual support. And from our government, we have organizations that require working with the local communities because we can transfer responsibility to community members but these all these actions are undertaken by women we have been a disruptive government and we've been criticized but we've also seen the great progress in our community Thank you so much, I do be. Your story and how you're like fighting and changing uh, the story of politics in Colombia and in your municipality. Uh, we will stay in Latin America and now move a little bit up uh, to Guatemala. Uh, with us, we have uh, Celestina Tepaz and she is the mayor of the municipality of Santa Maria de Jesus. I mean, she, her story is very special. She is the only Maya woman uh, that is a mayor in the municipality. Uh, Celestina, le voy a decir ahora en español. Ahora tú, tú, no I'm going to be speaking in Spanish. I hope that you can tell us about how you started with politics and the difficulties that you faced by becoming a mayor. Buenos días. Good morning. Can you all hear me? So can I start? Thank you so much. So good morning and greetings to everyone, those of you um, in the virtual platform. My name is Celestina Tepaz Acalón from Santa Maria de Jesus, eh, the province of Zapateque, Zapatepeque from Guatemala. So for me, it has been very important my participation in the politics in politics from a Mayan uh, member. So at provincial level for me, this has been a great inspiration that has motivated me through the example of my father who was also a mayor in 1993. So for me, that has been the main source of inspiration and motivation for the development of our community. I have faced many challenges through machism and by not allowing women to participate, for only men to have the opportunity to participate, unfortunately. But as women, we can undertake any public position in the government. Also, my policy for women is to empower them when it comes to equality of rights, for them to be aware of what their rights are and to be able to defend themselves. So I want to tell women that at the level of Santa Maria de Jesus, we have faced the first policy on violence against women. And we, I feel sorry for what is happening and we're trying to provide training at community levels so that they are that they are aware of their knowledge of the 
of the right and so to provide tools and it's very complicated because we can't change things overnight it's the whole process that is long term and so today from now on we'll be supporting them we'll be helping them and women need support so that we can all be supportive in the whole process and we also need women to participate in politics we need more women and having more women we will have more sisters to hold our hands and to precisely develop our country and guatemala and especially in the community of my province santa maria de jesus thank you so much for this opportunity to join you and i'm very pleased to have been selected especially by representing a mayan person thank you so much celestine it's a pleasure to have you here so i guess if we go into um indigenous communities also that can become mayors the number even goes uh, smaller so you are also very special here um our last panelist is marianne hennel and she is from sweden from the municipality of Vestervik. you are a municipal councillor uh well we want to start by asking you what inspired you to uh, become a politician marianne Oh, uh, yes. Hi, thank you for this opportunity. Um, I would say that the thing that inspires me to be a politician is to influence our communities, our society to do change and to be more modern and to keep up with the things that our society's people are asking for, and especially women. Uh, I advocate for young women, young, uh, young girls who still want to be, they want to work as a mechanic, they want to be a nurse, they want to be whatever their mindset, uh, they want to be that. And we need as politicians to make that work, to make, a, you know, the gender should not matter. And the thing that uh, makes me want to be a politician is also the tradition that I come from. And I grew up with a family with a very strong mother who has been who was a politician in Finland and made me stronger, who made me believe in myself, who had made me be able to go my own way. Even if I'm not the Swedish norm, I have always been able to uh, I have been able to study, I have been able to do athletes, uh, to do sports, sorry, to do, do sports. Uh, and that is what we need to make the future women be able to do as well. And today we are in the middle of a change. We have older generations in Sweden that have been schooled, have been raised with a more conservative view of women in society, what they are supposed to be able to do and study and uh, things like that. But we have been making a huge leap forward and have new generations who are uh, challenging us, who is making us see that there is no, it's, uh, it doesn't matter which gender you have uh, or what you identify as you do whatever you want to do and there is like a, a collision that i think we can use in a positive way to make change to make us look at what kind of healthcare do we need what kind of educations do we need so my uh, the thing that drives me is the change that we are being able to do and we can do it together if we hook arms with each other, uh, both in Sweden, but also internationally. And take, I have been very inspired by the women who has been talking today before me, because we all have been doing our journey and we need to be able to um, share that with each other because that's what makes us stronger. I think, yeah. Thank you, Marianne. I think this is very interesting because you mentioned about challenges in Sweden uh, that is often considered among one of the most equal countries 
for women and men in the world. So when you uh, look around, you look for Sweden for inspiration and also from Canada. So I want to go back to you two, Mayor, Dan and Marianne, uh, to share with us what is the biggest challenge for gender equality in your municipalities right now? And then after that, since you are both uh, considered like in countries where we think there is a lot of progress. And after that, I will give the floor then uh, to I do be Celestina and Kanungwe to share from the other side, like from what we call the global south, uh, what are those challenges? I'm really curious to hear how much progress do we still have the same challenges despite where we are. Uh, so Mayor uh, Down, if you may share with us, what's the biggest challenge in your municipality for gender equality? Am I unmuted? Can you hear me? Okay, great. Uh, well, I, I agree with you, Marianne. Um, I've been very, very inspired by the bravery of the other panelists that have spoken here, because uh, Anna Maria, you make a great point. I mean, in Canada, we are perceived to be pretty equal. Um, there aren't enormous barriers to women running in politics. In fact, women are actively sought out to run. People want us to, to run. So I personally didn't face any real barriers when I was running. Um, and any challenges that I did have, they were, they were far more subtle. It wasn't, you can't do it at all. It was more like, mm, can she make the tough decisions? Um, you know, will she be able to handle the hard stuff? Um, and of course, just the regular comments, because I am the first woman mayor in my, in my city. It's just like, you know, she's not a lawyer. She's not a businessman. She doesn't look like the guys before. She doesn't smell like the guys before. So, you know, that's, that creates a lot of um, a discomfort for people. So I believe right now in, in Canada, at least, the biggest challenge to gender equality is creating a respectful environment. Uh, my mantra has been change the game. Don't let the game change you. And uh, I believe that politics doesn't have to be this nasty, nasty business, but it unfortunately often is. And the biggest challenges I hear from women are challenges that they, they don't like the process. They don't like that combativeness of politics, that nature that is divisive, the partisanship, the lack of trust, the lack of civility, the lack of accountability and uh, collaboration. So, so that's my that's that's my mantra. I want to change that, and so um, that's been that's been a big impetus for for me is to is to make things better for for younger women to to get into this field so that so that it it really doesn't have to be that nasty business, but it's a big challenge. <laughs> So you are changing the politics from inside and uh, trying to make this a respectful environment, as you said, uh, so that actually, even though the formal barriers and are not there, it is an environment where women can thrive also and where they can reinvent politics. Thank you. Uh, Marianne, what would you say is the biggest challenge for gender equality in your municipality? Uh, oh, thank you. Um, I actually agree a lot with Dawn, what Dawn said. Uh, we have made progress. Uh, we are one country that people look up to when it's uh, about gender equality. Uh, I would say it's a lot about actually to be able to keep looking beyond the gender, to be able to keep up working with the question about equality. Uh, not getting stuck in what we have done and be satisfied because uh, today there is a lot of people who raises voices and says that we are, we have gotten a long way in Sweden. Do we need to do more? And yes, we need to do more because we, this is a work that always needs to be done. We don't, we can't forget it. Uh, we can't be satisfied because we have a long journey ahead of us. Um, so I would say that's the big challenge today to keep up the good work and to listen to other countries and take 
good points in how they are doing their journey because even if we have gone far we are not uh, we are not to be satisfied uh, we need to look at uh, the healthcare we still have uh, if we look at the healthcare we have to look at the uh, I'm sorry, I'm losing words at the moment. Research. Oh, thank you. Uh, research. Uh, we need to do more research with uh, female illness because we are not doing that as much today as we need to be doing. We need to raise the the salary, we need to minimize the salary gap to make more women be more free to make their own decisions, to form their own lives. But the, I think that's what we all need to do, uh, no matter what the country, but we still need to do that. And I agree with what Dawn said before, that what I meet is that there are women who don't like the politic, uh, the politic games that are played. And it's a hard game and it doesn't need to be as hard uh, because there is a, a high barrier to get into the politic arena. And when you are there, you, you are faced with the questions that uh, Dawn raised before. Uh, are you being able to make the hard choices? And I usually ask the question back, what are the men being able to take the hard questions, to take the hard decisions? What is the, what is the uh, difference between us? And I think that's what we need to do more, to ask the question, what is the difference? And being stronger in and believe in ourselves to do that as women. And we need to do it together. So that's the challenge today, I think. Thank you, Marianne. What is the difference? Like, why is that uh, we are all different and bring different things into politics? So it's hard to understand. So why? Um, uh, to move forward, since we are, uh, the time is moving very quickly, um, I want to move into actually the next question. And I have asked all of you to think about one policy that you implemented, actually having these feminist uh, lenses in mind in your municipality and that you are proud of, right? We raise the problems, the challenges, but the title of the panel is Feminist Mayor Equal Cities for All. What is this policy that you have implemented that you want to share that has created a change not only for women but for men children elderly for everybody uh, and i will give the floor uh, to i do be first i can't hear you no can you now hear me? Well, we have a program called Curvoscaca uh, is like Rumba because we need to find the way for communities to link to be linked to the different activities of this program. So uh, being part of a family is the network of this program and in this way we've been uh, able to strengthen the school of parents and who usually integrates this network mothers it's usually mothers who are part in almost all processes of their children and in this following this logic with the work that we've been undertaking in the past three years we realized that the best way for us to be able to do an evolutionary process to strengthen women is from families comes from schools and family because young children acquire this knowledge from can assimilate it from an earlier stage and we've been doing this from school level by addressing now addressing this uh with adult women is more complex because 
especially in my municipality, this is not the way we've been doing things. And so when, as women, we need to support each other by providing training. In the first year, we conducted training in, financial, uh, in the financial arena because women usually stays in this region at home. And this is unpaid work and women stay at home and don't get any recognition. So through this kind of training, we want women to slowly but surely, because I wanted to, as soon as I got to this position, I wanted to make a radical change, but we need to make sure that we provide training for women to undertake this slow but stable change. And at municipal level we've been supporting these programs and productive projects such as uh, a sewing workshop that we provide to rural women from our municipality but we need to continue with this process which is not achieved in two or three years but rather it it, it provides a public policy in the long term and we need not only for this policy to remain in paper, but rather for us to be allocated with resources so that we can uh, get at, have results at urban level, but also to the ur rural areas, which in my municipality, as I said, it's mainly rural, a rural area. And this means that we have a small population in a vast territory and so to reach these people we need to work in as part of a team and well each area has its own particularities but what we need is to support each other as women we need to get training and for sure we'll be able to construct and build a better society together it, you started from putting everybody to dance that's something we like to do in Colombia and to mobilize the families and to mobilize women and men in those uh, families and on that I want to just give you tips that we will have uh, in the next hour a workshop about the policy of the city of Bogota is called care blocks and it's a policy to change the way uh, care is done that traditionally is done by women and they've been uh, very successful in engaging men as well in this change for gender equality. I would like to give uh, the floor now to Celestina uh, para que nos cuentes una política muy eh, cortamente. For you to tell us briefly on a policy that you've implemented at your municipality that you're very proud of. Adelante. Gracias. Thank you so much. Well, what we're currently working on and the Division Department of Women is training on empowerment and for them to be aware of their own rights so that they can defend themselves. And we're also providing courses on cooking, on, on different uh, fields so that they can set up a business and they can learn from these training so that they can become, as I said, entrepreneurs and be able to have their own development within their own communities and their homes, because we know that women are the ones who usually bring food to the table. They are the ones who think about this. They think of feeding their children and they can become good administrators and managers. So in this way, we're working alongside women by providing training. And uh, as we've heard with our previous speaker, training is the right way to empower women. Thank you so much empowerment on learning about our rights and also economic empowerment right because if we don't have the means to build self uh financially sustain ourselves it's very hard also to participate and to be empowered Tanungwe, what about you what is a policy that you're very proud to implement in your district in zambia and um, very briefly Uh, sorry about that. I thought I'd already unmuted. Uh, for starters, 
allow me, this can't go without saying it, allow me to actually say there is a lot of hope from the previous speakers. Um, I say so, especially when I heard Don and Marianne talk about how far they've come and uh, where they are at, because you know sometimes we think when we champion in the gender equality and the gender equity, and you begin to see some, um, so you begin to see some fruits bearing in your district, you're thinking it could just be a coincidence. So in Kanchibi uh, right now, I've got a number of uh, programs that are running. Uh, one of the major programs that I'm currently funding personally is actually the mentorship program, which is a mentorship school programs. So I basically get volunteers to come on board different young girls in different fields, doctors, young lawyers, young teachers, young accountants, they come on board and I move with them in different schools. So we will hold different workshops where they tell their stories, how they manage, they basically telling them the challenges that they had and how they got there. Remember in the beginning, I, I, I mentioned that Kanchiri have been a rural uh, district. We have a lot of patriarchal uh, challenges, a lot of stereotypes. There are proverbs that are there to just demean a woman to make sure that the woman stays home and does not go out there to uh, look for employment. And if you go out there and you leave your child, you're considered to be a bad mom. So I am a good example in this case. I am in Kanchibia district and my family lives in another district which is called Indola district, which is more than 700 kilometers away from Kanchibia. So I have got two girls and they live with their father. I am mayor of Kanchibia and I'm working in Kanchibia that you never hear of. At first, they were actually thinking she's not right. She's a, she's a woman, she's supposed to be with the children and she's left the children with the dad. But no, we are changing the narrative. Just because you're a woman doesn't mean that that child is stuck on you. The children have already been born. I'm raising responsible uh, citizens. So if these children are going to be future leaders, they need to realize that there's more to a woman than just sitting in a house. So that is the concept and the narrative that we are trying to build in a girl child in Kanjibia. So away from that, we've got a number of activities that are also going on in terms of uh, women empowerment. So we realized that previously, even when gov uh, central government would uh, push in some resources to help local authorities to uh, give to women, they didn't have the capacity. So there's what we are calling now uh, skills training development. So the women are being taken for skills training and development and we are encouraging them. Then we're also partnering with different NGOs who are coming on board. Uh, USAID is one of them. They are coming to do trainings at a uh, local level. So they're doing community-based trainings where they are training women on how they are uh, financial literacy, how they need to spend their money, what type of investments are good. Uh, to mention but a few because previously what we noticed was would give the women the empowerment and the grants but they would just share the money amongst themselves and would get uh, back to the same cycle of poverty so now with a lot of uh, in enlightenment you can actually see there is so much activity that is going on in the district where well, uh, uh, this year i think it suffice to mention that the girls at grade seven performed way better than the boys in Kanchiria district. And I need to mention that I guess our efforts are actually beginning to bear fruit. So it's um, some to mention uh, in, a, in a nutshell, those are some of the policies that uh, we are implementing. One thing that we have also said, being mayor of Kanchiria and being a woman, I think we have, we, it's a policy that we have literally adopted as local authority, we are saying, Every ward development committee must have a female representation because with us in Kanchibia, we cannot call it democracy if it is not fairly represented. So for now, we've got low numbers, but the positive aspect is we have women sitting on these boards because this is where decisions are made. And we are making sure that as they are seated there, they are also getting uh, the necessary skills and the necessary training through capacity building workshops that they need to voice out. So that is something that is uh, I thought I mentioned to you. Uh, of course, there are a number of other activities, but I mm -hmm. think with the limited time I've been given, I could uh, like to end here.
Thank you, Kanung. It's very powerful to hear also how you have seen those changes in the education already and that the girls are performing better at school. That's something to be proud of and very important also to share. Um, I want to give the word uh, to Mayor Arnold and I wanted to ask you two questions at once since we are approaching the end. Uh, so I want to ask you about the policy that you are proud of in your municipality and also what advice you will give to other women in Canada, but also around the world that want to become mayors. Well, thank you, Anna Maria. Wow, this is so inspiring. Lots and lots of ideas here. Um, as far as actual policies, you know, we have a lot of them already were in place before I got here. You know, we ensure that we have diversity on when I name people to our agencies, our boards and commissions. This is really vital that women are sitting around those other committee tables so they get the skills to be able to lead. Um, we've held workshops for women who are thinking of, uh, you know, running for politics uh, to get them around the table. We have the standard, you know, daycare uh, of policies for elected officials. Uh, we've made, um, I would say, something I'm very proud of is, is some of the improvements to our code of conduct, our respectful workplace policies. But I'm, I'm super proud of something that we do here. It's called the Mayor's Youth Advisory Committee. And this has been going on for years. But since, uh, you know, women, it's always been boys and girls participating. They're from high schools. They come together. They do this big youth fest. And as they do it, it was really interesting to watch prior to me becoming mayor, that while the women would they be doing lots of behind the scenes stuff, no one ever ran for mayor. No one ever got elected. Since I've become mayor, every single year they vote a woman as mayor. And it really just, it proves that point. You can't be what you can't see. And it's been, it just sort of happened that way, but it, it's been really interesting. But on actual policies, we're working on something really interesting right now through the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, where we're looking at not so much getting women into politics, but keeping them there. I don't know about everybody else around the table, but Jacinda Adern, her her leaving politics and Nicola Sturgeon in Scotland. I mean, these are, they were really upsetting to me to see women like that leave. So how can we make the processes, the policies better? So we're looking at things as easy as this. I don't know about the other women around the table, but sometimes I'm not super quick on my feet. You know, I, I need to think things through. So do we have policies in place to make sure that if someone wants to put a motion forward, an idea forward, it, you don't have to respond respond to it in seconds. You have time to reflect on it. So just some of those subtle policies that that adapt to women, the way we think, because we often think about the global context of things, and uh, we can't just instantly have an answer on things. So um, those are some of the ideas we're working on right now. Thank you. Thank you, Don. I really like also your quote that see what you can be what you can see. Uh, so it's really also inspiring to see all of you here uh, because those are stories that will uh, move into other countries and places. Marianne, what's the policy from Vestavik that you think has been very successful? And also what advice would you give to other women that want to become politicians in Sweden, but also in other countries? And, and I think... Oh, sorry. Uh, well, I would say, as, as Dawn said, we have a lot of policies in place and I'm actually very new in politics. Uh, I've been working and have my career in uh, oh, um, in the private sector. Uh, but uh, so I would say that what I would like to say to all women and men in around the world, uh, we need to have more diversity to make our decisions better we need more women to be in the room where the decisions are made so we need more courage from both men and women to get into the room um, and to make politics uh, so i would like to say believe in yourself to the women and to the men i would like to say let the women believe in their self because they are as educated they are as important they are more important because we have fewer women so they need to be more that's what i would like to say thank you marianne um i do be ¿Qué le, ad consejo, what advice would you give what a, to ¿qué consejo daría a otras mujeres in colombia and elsewhere in the world
El primer consejo es que... So the first piece of advice would be that we need to empower ourselves every day. Because there will always be a situation where, for instance, I don't use the word problem or conflict anymore, but rather situation. We are faced to different situations and we need to uh, solve these situations. So if I know who I am, if I trust in my own abilities, then I can provide a solution. So my advice is then to work every day in believing in yourself, working in your own person, knowing who you are, so that you can make these decisions, sometimes tough and strong decisions. And when people think that we're not able to make these decisions, that we can show to the community that we can do it. And this comes from inner work, from our hearts, with our, with our patients and knowing who we are. If I am in my, if I am comfortable with myself, then I can externalize everything. And this way we can get good results. Well, thank you. So we cannot take democracy for granted. We cannot take gender equality for granted. Celestina, ¿qué consejo le das a mujeres? What advice would you give to women such as yourselves, who are also a member of I, a ethnic minority, who are not just facing the challenge of being a woman, but also of belonging to a another group of prone to discrimination? Well, thank you so much. Can you all hear me? So the advice I would give to all women uh, in, in Guatemala is that they participate. Don't be afraid of participating because sometimes this fear ties us and we end up saying, I'm not able to do this or I can just take care of my children. I can stay at home and this way I can cover my needs. But what I would like to say to women is go ahead. We are the main pillars of the household of society here in Guatemala, my beautiful country and what I would say is that you have the power in your own hands and you can make a change and you can undertake any political role, any uh, role in any sector. And we can do this because we have the tools to achieve this because we are fully able to undertake any role that we have. So I encourage women, men and women, professional women, to go ahead and make this decision of becoming a candidate today and of becoming more involved with politics. In this way, we can develop the need that our society has of having more women and for men also to acknowledge the value that women have in the home. This is what I wanted to share with you. I encourage all women, young women, to break and uh, overcome this fear and dare to participate. Thank you so much. We have to participate. Uh, women have to really vote and participate in democracy. Otherwise, there's no possibility to change. Kenungwe, what about you? You are last in the panel now to give this word of advice very shortly because I see already with five minutes past. Um, in short words, what advice would you give to other women in Zambia, in Africa, and other parts of the world? Uh, Yeah, so um, I think the one um, advice in one sentence is basically to just encourage women to become candidates. It's not impossible, it's possible because others have done, have done it before. So if others have done it before, we can also do it. And like I always say, you can never call it democracy if there is no equal representation. We need to be the change that we want to see. It's as simple as that. Otherwise, we'll continue complaining if we do not take up these seats. 
Thank you so much. And I think you end up with wonderful words. There cannot be democracy if there is no equal representation. And this uh, number of 5% really stays in my head as something that is worth challenging, worth changing, setting up as a goal in our world and in our countries and in our municipalities. I hope that we can come in two and three years and say it's not that 5% anymore, we have 50% because that should be more like normal. Uh, we have learned to accept that the normal is men in politics, but we have to challenge that norm and we have to undo that. And here, a panel with five very wonderful leaders, women, is a way to change that norm. This is how the world could look and what the world would look if we have more of female mayors. So I want to thank each of you, mayors and Councillor Marianne, for being here, for taking the time to share your stories, for being brave and powerful to uh, be these role models for many other women that will run for mayors in the future. Uh, so thank you so much. And we have in the next hour a um, workshop on practical tools because we have many people that register for this activity that say, okay, wonderful, we want more gender equality, so how do we do it? And we have five uh, breakout rooms, and then we want to invite all of you to stay for those breakout rooms. And they will start in about three minutes. But to go to the breakout rooms, what we would ask you to do is to change your name and uh, put the number of the breakout room that you want to go to. And uh, we, I will put them on the uh, screen so that uh, you can uh, see them. Just give me one second. 